Hello everybody and welcome back to Bones 5 YouTube channel on YouTube. In this video, I'll be going over how all the AI works in the popular Finds at Freddy's fan game, Five Nights at Candy's. Even if you're already familiar with the general idea of how FNAF games work, Five Nights at Candy's actually takes a much different approach in how it's programmed, with many many different and unique mechanics. So even if you already know everything about FNAF, stick around and I'm sure you'll learn something new or interesting. As per usual, I'll also be going over how to beat the hardest challenges that this game has to offer, along with a new, insanely difficult challenge that I created myself. So stick around to the end of the video to see that. But before we get into that, I would like to make a quick announcement. I had previously set the requirement for the Ultimate Custom Night Guide and Challenge video at 50k subscribers, but I have now removed that requirement entirely. In the Ultimate Custom Night video, I plan to involve my community as much as I can, as it is the ultimate AI breakdown after all. So to accompany the hardest challenge in UCN of 5020 no death coin, I'd like to feature an animated fight scene alongside it. If you're interested in helping out with this project, or being commissioned by me to do so, please join my Discord server at discord.gg slash muttarmy and contact me there. I don't expect anything more than line art in 3-5 seconds from each person. I don't require backgrounds, coloring, or shading. I'll also have a full document for character and scene references when the time comes to start the project. So again, if you're interested, join the Discord and contact me there. Once we have enough artists, I'll work as best as I can to make the best possible UCN AI breakdown and challenge video. I'm sorry, I know that was a long intro, but I really wanted to start working on this UCN video as soon as possible, so I just wanted to let you guys know what's going on. With that out of the way, let's get into the complete AI breakdown, one of the most well-known and well-liked FNAF fan games, Five Nights at Candies. Can I take your order? Now, the original Five Nights at Candy's has had a lot of different versions over the years, but for this video, we're going to be covering the remastered version of Five Nights at Candy's 1. The remastered version is almost identical to the original, but has more content to go over and is overall just a better looking and playing experience. This video will be split into chapters for each of the different game mechanics, so feel free to skip around whenever. First, let's go over the basics. Five Nights at Candy's is most similar to FNAF 1 in how it's presented. You keep your two side doors and have an additional third door in front of you. Your doors no longer have lights, forcing you to use the cameras to spot any immediate threats outside your office. Speaking of cameras, they have a new mechanic, night vision. Any of the newer model animatronics in Fancy Candies Candies have glowing white eyes that can be seen in dark spaces, including the cameras when the night vision is turned off. But for any older models, the night vision is required to view them on the cameras. The game has six nights, a custom night, and a special night that we'll get to at the end of the video. With that said, let's get into the universal mechanics of Fancy Candies. The way that Fancy Candies code is written is really hard to understand, so a huge thank you to Reddit user PXH Ghost for a majority of this info. Starting with the night length, each night lasts exactly 7 minutes. The hours are divided evenly, with each hour lasting 1 minute and 10 seconds. Hour works a bit differently in Candies compared to normal FNAF games. And with proper power management, it's actually extremely lenient. That was fing boring. You only ever see the power in whole numbers, but the power number actually gets really specific, with many, many hidden decimal places. The power drain for various actions is calculated in frames, so when I display values for power drains, I'll list the measurement per frame and the measurements in seconds. When doing absolutely nothing in the office, this is the idle power drain. When using the cameras with the night vision turned off, this value is added to the power drain. When using the cameras with the night vision turned on, this value is added to the power drain. The doors and candies are a bit more complicated in how they drain power compared to the normal FNAF 1 doors. The FNAF 1 doors drain power at a linear rate. 
whereas Candy's doors drain power exponentially. This means that the longer a door is closed in Candy's, the more power it's going to drain. The game lets the player know this through the bars displayed next to the door button. When any of the three doors are closed with no visible bars, this value is added to the power drain. For some strange reason, the right door actually drains less power than the other two doors. So here are the values added to the power drain for each of the bars for the left and middle door. And here are the values for the right door. Unlike the first FNAF game, these power measurements stay consistent throughout the entire game. You'll have the same amount of power on night 1 as you do on 720 mode. That covers the universal mechanics of Final Fantasy Candies. Now let's get into what you're really here for, the animatronics. We'll first go over some universal mechanics that cover all the animatronics, as a lot of them work really similarly in this game, and then some specifics for some unique animatronics. There are 7 animatronics total in Fancy Candy's 1, and if you're saying there's 8, we'll, we'll get to him later. There is Candy the cat, Cindy who is also a cat, Chester the chimpanzee, Dinner time. <gasps> oh, I think it is. Penguin the the penguin, old candy, blank, and the rat. The animatronics in Final Fantasy Candy's movements work very similar to the animatronic movements in FNAF games, operating on intervals and AI values to determine movement opportunities, though the formula is a bit different. I'm sure everyone's heard this a million times by now, but in FNAF games, animatronic movement is usually determined by comparing an animatronic's AI value to a random number between 1 and 20, resulting in a movement if the AI value is greater than or equal to that random number. In Candies, the formula instead looks like this, now generating a random number between 1 and 25 and subtracting the number of failed movements from the random number. This gives animatronics who just failed their movements a higher chance to move. The only exception to this rule is Blank, who kind of works like Foxy in this game, who instead of increasing his failed movement counter by 1 every failed movement, it increases by 0.5. And we'll talk more about Blank later. In FNAF 1, Scott varied the difficulty throughout the nights by increasing the animatronic's AI value at certain times in the night. For example, on night 1 of FNAF 1, Bonnie's AI will increase by 1 at 2 a.m. Animatronics in Final Fantasy Candies don't do this, their AI value will stay constant throughout the entire night. However, they do have one variable that changes throughout the game, and we're going to call this their start time. Start time is pretty self-explanatory. It's the amount of time after the night starts before a given animatronic can have any movement opportunities. For example, on night 1, Candy is able to start having movement opportunities after 10,200 frames or 170 seconds. On night 2, he's able to start having movement opportunities after 1,800 frames or 30 seconds. Honestly, it would be a waste of my editing time and your personal time to talk about every single animatronic's AI and start time on every single night. So here are some tables that I made that depict everyone's AI and start time throughout the entire game. Feel free to pause if you need. Once the start time for an animatronic is up, their interval, which again is the time until their movement opportunity equation is checked again, is then calculated using this formula. Unlike FNAF 1, where animatronics have fixed intervals the entire night, the chance of an animatronic moving and the time in which they move is random, though an animatronic with a higher AI value will tend to move more and have a faster interval. For example, if Penguin is at 20 AI and he rolls a 50 on this 0 to 119 value, his interval will compute out to 230 frames or 3.83 seconds for that movement. Combining that with the fact that he has an 80% chance to move by default, with that chance increasing with each failed movement, and you can see why animatronics are so fast in this game. That covers basic animatronic movement, but there is another mechanic that is unique to Final Fantasy Candies, and that is camera skipping. In normal FNAF games, multiple animatronics can be in one location at one time. However, in FNAC, only one animatronic can be in one camera at a time. If an animatronic wants to move to a camera, but another animatronic is already present in that camera, they will either just fail their movement opportunity or perform a camera skip. Now, let's talk about how camera skipping really works. Let's say there are three cameras. We're just going to call them camera 1, 2, and 3. And here we have Candy and Cindy. Let's say that Candy is in camera 2 and Cindy is in camera 1. Cindy's movement path is telling her that she needs to go from camera 1 to 2 to 3. But Candy's fat ass is blocking cam 2. 
so, Cindy will either fail her movement opportunity, or she will completely skip over Candy in Camp 2 and jump straight to Camp 3. However, Cindy can't just do this on a whim. There are a few conditions that determine whether or not Cindy's going to fail her movement, or jump over Candy in Camera 2. First, her failed movement counter must be greater than zero. If she's never failed a movement when trying to go from Cam 1 to 2, she will automatically fail her first movement. Second, if someone else is on the camera that Cindy is trying to skip to, for example if Candy is on Cam 2 and Penguin is on Cam 3, then she will fail her movement opportunity regardless of what her failed movement counter is at. There are also a few animatronic specific conditions with camera skipping. I know we had been using Cindy as an example, but she actually has her own special condition in which she's not able to jump from camera 2 to camera 4. Though this doesn't seem intentional, as she can jump pretty much everywhere else. If someone is in camera 5, Blank is not able to camera skip or overwrite that camera. He will simply wait to move until whoever is in cam 5 leaves. Lastly, for whatever reason, the penguin is not able to camera skip at all. Poor penguin. I take your door? The last general animatronic mechanic that we have to talk about is door attacks. There are only two different types of door attacks, with each of them following a similar formula. Those are blank, and everyone else. Let's talk about normal door attacks first because it applies to more animatronics. Once an animatronic reaches your door, their eyes will glow in the door opening, except for old candy and rat who do not have glowing eyes. Once an animatronic reaches your door, they completely disregard the old formulas for movement opportunities. Instead, they now have two new timers, attack patience and door patience. The moment an animatronic arrives at the door, their attack patience is set using this formula and their door patience is set using this formula. The attack patience formula will decrease whenever the door is open, and the door patience formula will decrease whenever the door is closed. Essentially, we want the door timer to reach zero, but we don't want the attack timer to reach zero. If the door patience timer reaches zero, the animatronic will be blocked by the door and return to their starting camera. When returning to their starting camera, their start time will be set to double what a normal movement interval would be for that night. If the attack patient's timer reaches zero, the animatronic will jam the door and enter the office. From this point, there is no way to avoid the jump scare, unless the night time runs out. The animatronic will then take a random number of time with a max of 10 seconds before jump scaring you and ending the night. The way that these formulas are set up actually makes the game really, really exploitable, but we'll get more into that in the 720 section. Now, there are some special cases with this attack timer. Blank and Penguin both have unique mechanics compared to the rest of the animatronics, who just jump scare you. First, let's go over the Penguin. Instead of jump scaring the player, he will camp onto your table like JJ in FNAF 2. From here, he keeps running his jump scare timer over and over again. Every time it reaches zero, he closes or opens one of the three doors in your office randomly. Can I take your order? Once Penguin is in your office, he will continue to do this until the night ends. There's no way to get him out of your office. Now, let's talk about Blank. Blank is the finest of Candy's equivalent of Foxy. His successful movement opportunities result in staged progression instead of camera movement. However, looking at him on the cameras doesn't actually stall him in any way. Blank will simply progress using the normal movement and AI timers, with the exception that his failed movement timer only increases by 0.5 every failed movement. Once he's reached stage 3, indicated by him standing up on the camera, he will move to cam 5 on his next successful movement opportunity. Once Blank has reached cam 5, his attack patience timer begins to count down. If he reaches zero, he smashes the window and will jump scare you shortly afterwards. If you look at Cam 5, this attack patience timer will be replaced with a fixed time representing Blank's swinging animation. Simply close the front door and you'll hear a bonk indicating that Blank has attacked. Okay, so I'm, I'm editing this video right now and I'm getting footage for Blank. There's one thing that I forgot to mention. Um, so if we never look at Cam 5, him bonking on the door is determined by his door patience. So we're going to wait. His door patience timer runs. And then it goes, okay? But if then if we look at cam 5, it doesn't use that door patience. So I'm going to cut to when I look at cam 5 instead. And it won't use that door patience. Like, he won't just instantly bonk unless you look at cam 5. Is what I'm trying to get at here. Okay, so he's not there. Close the door. Cam 5. Bonks. So it's, it's on sync when you look at cam 5 but if you never look at cam 5 it's going to use his door patience to determine when he um when he hits that door 
I, I just wanted to make that clear. The last thing to cover before we move on to the special knights in this game is the movement paths for each animatronic. Everyone except Candy and the Rat have fixed movement paths, and no one can ever move backwards like in FNAF 1. Cindy will start at Cam 1, then go to 12, 2, 5, 4, and then the right door. Penguin will start in the kitchen, which has no camera, then move to camera 12, then camera 2, then camera 3, and then the right door. Chester will start in cam 9, first peeking out of the curtain, then standing on the floor, then cam 8, 7, then the left door. Old Candy will start in cam 10, move closer to the camera, then go to cam 9, 8, 7, then the left door. We've already explained Blank's movement, so I'm not going to talk about him here. Now, Candy and the Rat are special in that they can attack both your left and right doors. Candy will start in Cam 1, then move to Cam 2. From here, he will either choose to go left or right. If there is an animatronic in Candy or Rat's path, they will automatically go to the other path instead of trying to perform a camera skip. For Candy's left path, he will move from Cam 9 to 8, 7, then the left door. For his right path, he will move from Cam 5 to Cam 3 to the right door. Rat will start in Cam 13, which you can't normally see, but we'll get to that in a bit. Then he moves to Cam 9. He then chooses to either go left or right. On his left path, he moves to Cam 8, then 7, then the left door. On his right path, he moves from Cam 9 to Cam 2 to Cam 5, then to Cam 3, and then finally to the right door in Cam 4. And that covers almost everything in the base game of Five Nights at Candy's. But remember, we're covering the remastered version of this game, and there is a lot more to go over. Before we get to the remastered editions, let's talk about the hardest challenge of the traditional Five Nights at Candy's, the 720 mode in the Custom Night. Animatronics in the Custom Night work identically to how they do in the normal game, with one key difference. Since this isn't a set in-game night, Animatronics don't have a set start time. Instead, their start time is decided by a new formula that is exclusive to the Custom Night. Now, if you remember, earlier in the video I mentioned how door attacks are extremely exploitable in this game, but I didn't exactly explain why. Well, here's where that comes into play. Normally, beating 720 would be extremely difficult. Even though the animatronics aren't actually guaranteed to move on every single movement opportunity, we still have to constantly deal with 7 different extremely fast animatronics and without sounds to indicate when they leave the doors, you'd have to track them on the cameras to make sure that they're gone. However, you barely have to use the cameras at all in order to beat 720. Let's go back to some of our graphs from earlier. Take a look at the power that the doors use in Candies compared to FNAF 1. Notice how at the very beginning of the graphs, Candies doors are always draining less power than FNAF's doors. So if we can keep the doors in this range of power usage, we'll be able to have both of the doors closed for a majority of the night with very little power usage. Now, why is it so important that we always have the doors closed? Well, remember the way that attacks work in this game. The attack formulas are completely unchanged from the base game, meaning that animatronics will attack based on attack patients and door patients. Since our doors are closed for most of the night, the attack patients timer, which runs out when the doors are open, almost never has a chance to run but the door patient's timer, which runs when the door is closed, will usually run right as an animatronic gets to the door, causing them to leave extremely quickly. Even if we don't know an animatronic is there, like with Rat or Old Candy, it just doesn't matter, because we'll never have the door open for long enough for their attack timer to reach zero. Our only reason to use the cameras is to check what stage Blank is in, and then close the middle door if he isn't in the drawing room. Basically, we keep the doors closed until they're about to go above one bar of usage, then open them to get rid of all the door bars, close them again, and repeat, while checking what stage Blank is in every now and then. It's actually very lucky for us that the door attacks were programmed this way. If animatronics instead used movement opportunities to determine attacks, the strategy wouldn't be nearly as consistent, as you could get unlucky with someone having a movement opportunity right as you open the door to get rid of any bars. But because attacks instead use the values of attack patients and door patients, this challenge is stupid easy. I played this game on stream for the first time ever and managed to beat the 720 mode first try with 12% power remaining using this strategy. That was f***ing boring. But that seemed a bit lame, so I thought I would do something a bit cooler for this video. So I decided to beat 720 mode without using any cameras, but this also turned out to be 
really easy. The only challenge in beating 720 this way was predicting when Blank is going to move. We're first going to have to figure out what his start time is. Then we can get a general guess of how often he's going to move from this point forward. We can do this by taking the formula for determining the start time on the custom night and averaging it out. The formula generates a random number between 0 and 119, and we have no idea what that number might end up being. So let's just say it generates a 60 both times, as that's the average for the range of 0 to 119. If we plug 60 into our formula for the random number and plug the AI value in as 20, it computes blank start time at 240 frames or 4 seconds. Coincidentally, plugging in 60 and 20 for our random number and AI value in the normal movement formula also ends up computing blank start time at 4 seconds. Because the animatronics take twice as long to start moving on their first movement opportunity after being blocked from the door, we can estimate that when Blank is as aggressive as he possibly can be, he's going to try and attack our office roughly every 16 seconds. Using this strategy, I managed to beat 720 with no cameras on the first try, but I wasn't quite done yet. When an animatronic spawns at your door on 720 mode, their attack time will start at 5 seconds. So if we know for certain that an animatronic is at our door by seeing glowing eyes, we can let their attack timer run for as long as possible and save more power. With this strategy, I was able to complete 720 mode with no cameras, with 31% power left. He spawned at the very end. Let's go. 30% power, no cameras, 720. Oof. 31% actually, but let's go. I'm sure this number could be pushed way higher, but that's all I really cared to get. However, even though that 720 is a joke in this game, the real max mode definitely isn't. That's right, it's time to talk about Shadow Candy. Before we get into the most complicated AI in this game, let's first go over the basics of Night Null or Night 8 as it's referred to in the code. To even get to this night, you first have to complete the main game and Night 6. Once you complete those two nights, you unlock the Extras menu. Now go into the Extras menu and you'll notice the old timey music completely stops once you get to the rat. Zoom in on the rat's head for a few seconds and he'll start twitching. I wonder, I wonder where they got that idea from. Then, seven seemingly random numbers will flash, corresponding to the custom night screen. These numbers are actually generated once you install the game for the first time, and they never change unless you delete and reinstall the game. Now, input those numbers into the custom night screen as they're displayed during the cutscene with rat, and you should load into the night with no normal animatronics present. Then, go to the show stage and turn on the night vision and you'll see our antagonist for the night, Shadow Candy. Drop your cameras and he'll stand there and teleport you into the Null Night. You'll now notice that Cam 13, a previously unseen camera, is now visible. Shadow Candy will start from this camera and teleport around the map. He can either be located in a camera with the night vision on or off. Your objective is to check all the cameras around the map in order to find him and send him back to Camp 13. This entire night is pretty much just a game of hide and seek with Shadow Candy. If you aren't able to find Shadow Candy, he'll try to attack you from any of your three doors. Though this won't kill you. Instead, he will steal a certain amount of your power and turn back the time of the night by one hour. You can stop this by either blocking off Shadow Candy with the door, which causes him to steal 2% of your power every time that he knocks on the door, or you can find the GOAT, the GOAT he's back, the origami cat on the cameras, to bring the night time back to what it was before you were attacked by Shadow Candy. Though, you don't get the 5% power back by doing this. The only way to actually lose in this night is to power out. Survive for 7 minutes, or however long it takes you if your time is set back by Shadow Candy and the Null Knight is complete. Now, what's actually going on in this night? Shadow Candy is by far the most complicated topic I've ever covered on this channel, so get ready, it's about to get so serious. 
Like everyone else, Shadow Candy has a start time, interval, AI value, attack time, and door time, though some of these variables are used for different purposes than the rest of the cast. He also has a few unique variables, most notably a position variable, indicating whether or not he's going to be visible with the night vision on or off. If the position variable is set to 1, then you'll have to use the night vision to see him. If it's set to 0, then you'll have to have the night vision off to see him. In camera 13, where he can be seen with the night vision on and off, the position value is set to 0.5. Now let's talk about his AI value. His AI value will start at 1, then increase to 2 at 2am, and 3 at 4am. It doesn't go any higher than this throughout the entire night. I was actually interested in seeing what would happen if his AI value was increased, say, to 20, and the results were interesting. Three, four, five, six, seven. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You're good. Okay, now nah, we're good. When Shadow Candy first spawns into the night, he'll start at Cam 13. His start time is always exactly 600 frames or 10 seconds. Once those 10 seconds are up, Shadow Candy will begin having movement opportunities. His interval for these movement opportunities follows this equation. This means that from 12 to 2 a.m., Shadow Candy will have a movement opportunity every 2 seconds. From 2 to 4 a.m., he'll have a movement opportunity every 1.83 seconds. And from 4 to 6 a.m., he'll have a movement opportunity every 1.66 seconds. This equation determines whether or not that movement opportunity is successful. Upon having a successful movement opportunity, Shadow Candy will then teleport to a random camera that isn't directly outside of your office, so anywhere that isn't camera 4, 5, or 6. The position variable, which again tracks whether he's going to be visible with night vision on or off, is also randomized. Once he leaves cam 13, what we're going to call his wander phase begins. Once the wander phase begins, his door patience is set at 600 frames, but this isn't actually his door patience. Remember that Shadow Candy uses variables from the main game in different ways. His quote unquote door patience actually determines how long you have until he enters his attack phase. So we're going to rename this variable time until attack. Time until attack is always set at 600 frames, or 10 seconds upon Shadow Candy leaving Cam 13. During these 10 seconds, Shadow Candy will continuously have movement opportunities, jumping around to random cameras with the exception of your door cameras. If you end up finding Shadow Candy, you'll have to stare at him for 3 seconds to end his attack phase, sending him back to Cam 13 and repeating the cycle. Note that when you're looking at Shadow Candy, he is still having movement opportunities, and he can cue a movement while you're looking at him. For example, let's say Shadow Candy is in camera 8 with the night vision off when you catch him, but you just barely caught him. A few more frames and he would have moved. If he happens to have a successful movement opportunity while you're looking at him, the moment you click off of that camera, he's already gone to another random one. This is why sometimes you'll be clicking through the cameras really fast, see Shadow Candy, then go back to that camera and he'll be gone. In the time that you were off of that camera, he either had a successful movement opportunity or had one queued and was ready to move the moment you left that camera. Here's an example of what I mean. Shadow Candy is on Cam 2, but since I'm scrolling through the cameras really quickly, I failed to stop on Cam 2 and freeze him. In that split second where I clicked off, Shadow Candy either had a movement queued while I was looking at him and then he immediately moved, or he had a movement right as I clicked off of the camera. Let's say that you don't find Shadow Candy, and the time until attack variable has reached 0. Once this variable reaches 0, on Shadow Candy's next successful movement opportunity, he will teleport to one of your door cameras. Once he teleports to one of your door cameras, the attack phase begins. At this point, there is no way to avoid some sort of power loss. Upon entering the attack phase, Shadow Candy's attack patience is set to 600 frames or 10 seconds, the same amount of time as his time until attack. However, this timer can be altered depending on what the player does, similar to how Blank attacks. If you don't do anything at all, Shadow Candy will attack once this timer reaches 1 second or 60 frames. If you find Shadow Candy on one of your door cameras and look towards whatever side he's on, the timer will instantly be forced to 1 second or 60 frames and Shadow Candy will immediately attack. From here, you have 30 frames to close the door before Shadow Candy enters your office and attacks you. If you instead close the door that Shadow Candy is at at any point during the attack phase, Shadow Candy's attack time will be set to 30 frames. He will then knock on your door for a random number of times, with each knock stealing 2% of your power. How many times he knocks is determined by this equation. If you're wondering what floor means in this equation, it just means to always round a floating point number down. 
For example, the floor of 2.99 is 2, and the floor of 3.01 is 3. The number of knocks that Shadow Candy does scales with his AI value, which is why a 20 AI Shadow Candy really, really wanted to get inside. If Shadow Candy does manage to get inside and attack you, he will steal either 4, 6, or 8% power depending on his AI level, and he will set the time of the night back by 1 hour. Sorta. He doesn't actually decrease the time variable by 1 hour, he instead adds 1 hour to the night. For example, if you get jump scared by Shadow Candy twice during the night, you'll have to spend 8 in-game hours in the night instead of 6. This is effectively reversing time, and even the clock shows it but I figured I'd be as accurate as possible. This is always exactly for one hour. For example, if the time is 3.30, the time will now be 2.30. When this happens, Shadow Candy will not spawn back at Cam 13. Instead, he will go straight to his wander phase. The only way to send him back to Cam 13 is to find him on the cameras. One really big misconception I've seen about Shadow Candy is that he can choose to spawn directly at your door, and I can see why people think this. If you're checking all of the cameras, and Shadow Candy happens to move to a camera that you've already checked while you're still going through all of them, it can seem like he just chose to spawn at your door, since you went through every single camera and never saw him. But this was just him evading your camera checks, not choosing to spawn at the door. It is 100% possible to beat all of Night Gnaw without Shadow Candy ever attacking you or knocking on your door although it's very difficult and luck based. The last thing that we have to talk about in this night is the Origami Cat. Once Shadow Candy attacks you, you'll notice that the Origami Cat will disappear from your desk. Your goal now is to find the Origami Cat and click it on the cameras in order to bring it back to your office. I'll list where the Origami Cat can be on the cameras now. In camera 1, the Origami Cat is right behind the plastic tree on the left. In camera 2, he's right on top of the table next to the Cindy cutout. In camera 3, he's on top of the leftmost upside down chair. In camera 4, he's just sitting on top of the candy cutout. In cam 5, he's just sitting on the floor. He's pretty hard to miss on this one. In cam 6, he's just sitting on the very top shelf to the right of the room. In cam 7, he's sitting on the shelf second from the top on the left. In cam 8, he's sitting between the two upside down chairs right under the Cindy poster. In cam 9, he's sitting in the candy cutout in the bottom left corner of the room. In cam 10, he's sitting on the broken penguin's body on the left. In cam 11, he's sitting on the edge of the table with all of the pencils. In cam 12, he's sitting on the table right on the left corner. And in cam 13, he'll be sitting on a box in the bottom left corner. Once you've clicked the origami cat, he will return to your office and set the time back to whatever it was before you were attacked by Shadow Candy at all. Remember earlier how I said that the game adds to the total hours you need to spend in the night? Well, clicking on the origami cat will correct that value to whatever the original time was. For example, if you got jump scared at 4.30am, which sets the time back to 3.30am and you spend 5 in-game minutes looking for the origami cat and find him at 3.35am, clicking the origami cat will set your time to 4.35am. That was a lot. But in the actual code of the game, this is just moving the goalpost of when the night ends. The night lasts the same amount of time as every other night, 7 minutes exactly. So if you find the origami cat or just never get attacked, you'll be finished in exactly 7 minutes. After figuring out how Shadow Candy works, I realized a few things. First, Shadow Candy's movement equation has one key detail missing that all the others have. Everyone else's movement equation has a failed movement counter, meaning that even on the extremely rare case that I one AI animatronic fails 24 movements in a row, they are still guaranteed to move at some point. Shadow Candy does not have this failed movement counter, and because Shadow Candy requires a successful movement opportunity to get out of Camp 13 and to go from his wander phase to his attack phase, in theory, you could play a full night of Night Null and never have Shadow Candy attack you, which means you could get a perfect Night Null green run of 95%. That sounds cool, but in practice this is much less interesting. Now, you might be wondering, the Bones 5, what, what, what's, the, what's the challenge in this, right? because you're just sitting here. You sit here for seven minutes. That is the challenge. You have to sit here for seven minutes with no stimulus, no, no subway surfers, mm -mm. no TikTok, no, 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 Instagram, no, no other, we have to sit here, we have to watch, we have to think. I will not touch my phone. I will not honk Andy's nose. 
Now, what's the chance of this happening in an actual night? It's basically zero. Technically, it's zero with 100 decimal places, but yeah, pretty much zero. There's no chance. And you may be wondering how I managed to get a run with a chance this low. After all, this would require insane luck, but um, I didn't do that. <laughs> But the second and much more important thing that I realized is how the game treats Shadow Candy compared to normal animatronics. See, when the game displays an animatronic on a camera, it's referencing a preloaded image of that camera. For example, when Candy is on Cam 2, they aren't moving a Candy PNG into Cam 2, they're changing the image of Cam 2 and overriding it to one where Candy is there. However, when Shadow Candy is present, it's just a PNG of Shadow Candy in that camera. The game doesn't overwrite that base room image at all. Now, why does this matter? It matters because this means that Shadow Candy doesn't follow the rule of not having multiple animatronics in one camera, meaning that if we mod Shadow Candy into the normal game, Shadow Candy can coexist with the normal night. I always try and do the hardest challenges for whatever game I'm covering in these videos. After all, you first research and understand how everything works, then use that knowledge to your advantage. But for Five Nights at Candies, the challenges just seemed way too easy and boring, compared to the kind of challenges that I normally cover on this channel. But with the power of modding the game, I've finally found a challenge for this video. We set everyone's AI to 20, and we load into Night Null. Everyone, it's time for the true hardest challenge in Five Nights at Candies, combining both max modes into one, into the perfect 720 plus Shadow Candy. In order to beat this mode, you have to have a near perfect understanding of every mechanic I've mentioned in the game along with extreme precision and speed. Which is why I think this is the perfect challenge to end this video with. This is no doubt the hardest challenge that I've ever done in any FNAF game. Not only do you need amazing luck and speed when catching Shadow Candy so that he never knocks or steals any power, but you also need to perfectly stall every single animatronic's attack time at the doors in order to save power. It ain't so hard bro. Gaster's top one, by the way. Like, there's no better character ever. <laughs> like, really think it's about it. Truly an honest thing. <laughs> uh, uh, ain't, ain't funny no more. <laughs> <laughs> On top of all that, you also need to manage blank without interfering with checking Shadow Candy. I'm not going to go into a complete guide on how to beat this challenge because one, it's not in the main game, and two, this video would probably be double the length of what it is now. But before I end the video with my 720 plus Shadow Candy completion, I have a challenge for all of you. See, the version that I completed is actually nerfed. What I did is combining Shadow Candy and 720 exactly how they were in the main game. But this challenge was originally intended to be even harder. Instead of 720 Shadow Candy, it was 725 Shadow Candy meaning animatronics could never fail movements and move much faster. I was not able to beat this mode, and I would honestly consider it impossible. If anyone can beat this mode and send me a video of it, I'll be sure to shout you out in the next video. The link to download the modded game by PXH Ghost will be in the description, along with the full unedited proof for this challenge. Also, if you miss seeing my face during this gameplay, I'm sorry. My webcam just straight up died. I don't know why it's doing this. I've tried unplugging, replugging, getting new drivers, everything. It just keeps displaying a white screen. So I'm sorry for this portion of the gameplay. My sound, the sound is still on, but unfortunately my face cam is not working. With that said, please enjoy the ultimate challenge of Five Nights at Candy's. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That was the worst mode ever. Thank God. That, that's official. 720 plus Shadow Candy is officially possible. Holy f 720 plus Shadow Candy is possible. Who will verify 725? <laughs> Luck in that run. Light going crazy. <laughs> Thank fucking God. I can go eat. I can go study for my test. <laughs> That's me. That's me right there. That's holy shit, dude. Oh my god. Before I end the video, there are some small things that I forgot to mention because they were either way too complicated for the main part of the video, or I just didn't feel like adding them because I got lazy. The first one is the jump scare equation. This determines how much time it takes after a door locks before the animatronic actually jump scares you. This is that equation. It's honestly so complicated for really no reason, and because it only has a max of 10 seconds, I really didn't think it was that important for the main part of the video. I also forgot to mention that Rat will gain an extra move after beating Night and All and unlocking Camp 13, going from instantly exiting the camera when it's not visible to two stages in Camp 13 before moving to Camp 9. It's been a while since the last roundtable update as well. If you're new here, the roundtable is where I catalog the hardest enemies I've faced on this channel. From this video, I have to include Shadow Candy and Blank. Shadow Candy is extremely RNG based and requires crazy speed when checking the cameras for him. Blank works really well in combination with this, punishing you if you take too long to find Shadow Candy. I also forgot to add Balloon Boy from the Minus 7 video, so we have three new additions. Again, if you're interested in helping out with the UCN animation project, or you know someone who might be, please join the Discord and contact there. If things go well, expect the UCN video in 2-3 to three videos. With that said, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, it helps a bunch. Thank you for watching, peace.